right, turn with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. Very, very familiar passage of scripture. But we're going to go a little further than what we normally do. Verse 11. Verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. If you found it, shout hallelujah. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now look at verse 12. It says, Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hear you. I will hearken to, unto you. And verse 13 says, And you shall seek me and find me, and when you shall search for me with all your heart. Amen? So tonight we're going to continue in our series of Toxic with part, part 6. We're going to be talking about two different things, anger and fear. Anger and fear. How many is ready for this ride? All right. How many has been angry in the last week? Be honest. I've gotten angry. Don't be lying because I know. So. <laughs> How many has dealt with fear or anxiety in the last week or two? I think all of us have at some point. So we're going to be talking about these two things today. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for this word. Let this word go forth in power and demonstration of your spirit, a powerful seed planted in good ground to bring forth much fruit. And Holy Spirit, we are so thankful that you're in this room. Continue to lead and guide and direct us. Bring all things back to our remembrance. Whatsoever has been spoken, whatsoever has been written, give us insight for our eyesight. Open our ears that we may hear what you are saying to the church. And when we leave this place, we'll bear much fruit and continue to operate in your gifts. So confirm your word with signs and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and everybody says amen, amen. you may be seated in the presence of the Lord thank you for standing in reverence of the reading of God's word I want to begin with what Mark Twain said and it's going to be on your screen he said anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured I, I really enjoy Mark Twain's Samuel Clemens some of his quotes but that is a really great quote when it comes to the topic of anger and that's what we're going to be covering at first now I want to say how many there's so many things we don't I guess we could we could spend some time and probably call them out but we're not going to do that but there's so many things that get under our skin one of the things that I know that uh, I used to do God God forgive me uh, when my wife and I were dating, we dated for five and a half years uh, before we got married. And I told her father, I said, before, um, before we get married, um, she'll have to, you know, get out of college. And so you know, that was the plan, and that's what we did. But uh, there were little things that I used to do to kind of irritate her. And I knew, I knew a specific thing. Now, don't do this, because I know our kids know this. But there's something that she does not like, and it's biting on metal. That is one thing that she cannot stand. So if you took a fork and you put it in your mouth and you started going, oh, she starts going like this, you know. Looks like she's having some kinds of convulsions or something. But that gets under her skin. There's little noises. You could be tapping, you know, tap, tap, tap. That gets under her skin. It's these little things that get under her skin, you know. And there's so many things. You know, I could, I could think of things that get under my skin. Um, and I'm not going to tell you because then you will begin to promote that but uh, there's so many things that do that angers us um, how many have ever been frustrated driving in Jonesboro how about Paragol okay it's easy to become frustrated or have what they call road rage right and that's something else that gets us angry that produces that emotion but do you know that there are in, in at least in at least 15 different instances in the Word of God, it mentions anger and fire in the same verse. Anger and fire in the same verse. I find this kind of humorous because my last name is fire. And so <laughs> that, I guess that goes together. I don't know. <laughs> but here are some facts about fire. Number one, and it's going to be on your screen. Number one, fire is a gift that can sustain life. Fire is controlled, if controlled, maintained and contained, can keep you warm. Fire is used to cook with. Fire is used to heat your bath water. And fire is used for light. So those are some, some facts about fire. And uh, I think that's interesting. But there's something we need to realize about fire. And that's when fire rages out of control, what happens? It destroys everything in its path. 
It absolutely does. Fire, then, what it's teaching us, can be constructively or destructively, uh, and so can anger. Fire can be destructive or constructive. It can be something that can help us with our everyday life, or it can be something that will completely destroy us. And anger, the emotion of anger, is the same way. I'm going to show you out of the Word of God. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. It says, be ye angry. And what's the rest of the verse? And sin not. So we need, to, we need to complete that scripture, right? It says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. I find that's kind of interesting that that second scripture is connected to what Paul is writing to Ephesus here. Be angry, be angry, but do not sin. Wow, is that possible? Perhaps. It's important to note that anger, in fact, is an emotion that is not sin. That's something I think we need to realize, because you can't win in sin to begin with. But so what's, what's the Apostle Paul trying to tell us here then? Well, this brings my life point, Pastor Carl. My life point is this. We should get angry about the things that anger God. Not so angry because your team lost. I'm a, I'm a diehard Yankees fan. Uh, my, uh, <laughs> don't even think about saying, let me go, Carl, because I know you will. But when I was in eighth, seventh and eighth grade, my coach um, was Mickey Mantle's uh, younger brother, Mike Mantle. And uh, don't even see, there he goes. And it was just amazing. I was, I've always been a Yankees fan. I mean, Reggie Jackson, you know, uh, Mr. October and all the great things that happened. But I was watching them the other night and um, I saw that the Dodgers coming. And it's pretty cool that, uh, is his name Gavin Stone, I think, is from Lake City, who's the pitcher, and he was pitching for the Dodgers, and I mean, he's doing a tremendous job. I mean, this, I salute that young man, and he's doing a great job, all the way from Lake City, Arkansas, and he's here p pitching in the majors for the, for the Los Angeles uh, Dodgers, and I was just so angry the way the, uh, <laughs> the, way the Yankees, my Yankees were playing. I just couldn't believe that they're making so many mistakes and allowing things to take place, but you cannot win. You know, and that's getting angry about things that possibly doesn't really move God. We need to get angry about the things that anger God. And so anger can be a good quality if it's used properly. Anger can be a powerful emotion driving us to stand up for God. Amen? Anger can be the attitude that will lead us to, right, to react righteously when every, everyone else is opposing God's truth. We need some people to get angry for God, right? Ang not angry at God, but allow that emotion to build up some type of boldness to say, hey, look, let's stand up for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. But on the other end of this spectrum, the emotion of anger, anger becomes a terrible toxin when you lose control of your emotion and you begin to take matters in your own hands, right? Right? So I, I'm going to tell on myself, I don't mind. I'm not, I haven't arrived yet. I'm not perfect. So we're preparing to pull. I know Brother Dale knows a little bit about this because he was over at our house helping us uh, with the, uh, some of the electronic part of the pool. And I was getting it ready. Thank God it's all ready and I've been enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun. But uh, <laughs> I needed to get some help and I had an idea in my mind and I asked the boys, I said, will you come and help me get this um, top off of this pool? And we're going to just throw it away because it's all, it's corroded and it's nasty. And I thought it would be a good idea to cover it this time. And obviously it wasn't a good idea. And so I'm saying, hey, I need your help. And so I had it in my mind, this is what we're going to do. And I'm going to do it this specific way so you will not get all of the the algae and all of the little bugs and there's a lot of little spiders all on on your clothes all right I don't want that to happen so we're gonna do it this way and I was trying to explain myself and there's no excuse but I was trying to explain myself and we're trying to work together and I'm ahead of everybody else and I'm trying to show them what to do and finally I just got so angry at the boys I said look and Levi is trying to Levi of course you know he's a genius but he's 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 uh, examining the thing and he's at the situation and he's like dad let's do it this way you know he's trying to figure it out and I'm like I don't want to sit and try to figure it out I want it done right I don't want to analyze the situation let's get it done okay and I was just in 
you know how I get sometimes. And so uh, they were just looking at me like, and I started throwing the shovel and I started pulling it down. And, and when I did that, I managed to hurt my back. And I, of course, I didn't tell anybody about this, but I it managed to hurt my back. And it, I was, you know, with a sore back for a few, a few days because actually a few weeks. And so anger, when we begin to take it in our hands, it can cause us to, it, it can cause a deficit in our life in so many ways. So sinful anger is this, is getting angry at something or someone that leads you to react in an unrighteous way, right? Take your right hand, put it over your mouth and say sweet potato pie and shut my mouth. I know, I mean, we're all human, but I can see it telling somebody off. Hopefully no one's used a bad word. They say the church down the road, Sister Linda, they use bad words all the time. They cuss all the time. They got the cuss devil, the church down the road. But never anybody in Gospel Lighthouse Church has ever said a cuss word. Amen? <laughs> Not even on 404 East Vine, right? No one's cussing that COVID. I mean, we've never said a cuss word, right? But this is what Ephesians 4 and 26 says. The second part of that says, it's on your screen, it says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Wow. I asked my mother one time when we were getting married, and she said, son, my mom's had a lot of experience. <laughs> but she said, she said, son, she said, never go to bed angry. Has anybody ever heard that? Raise your hand. Never go to bed angry. Uh, so I had this, I tell another story. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories. So here I am, I'm irritating beautiful Crystal. We're dating and I'm in that old 1979 Dodge Colt before I had an accident. And uh, <laughs> I'm, at, I'm, I'm being a gentleman, I'm at the doorstep and of course, I've, all evening in our date, I'm just kind of irritating her. And she's at her dad's doorstep and she, the light is on, the porch light is on. And, you know, I'm saying good night. I'm not making any proposals to kiss her or anything. But I look at her in the face. I mean, just stare at her and I go, you want to slap me, don't you? <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. And she reached back and slapped the fire out of me. I mean, she slapped me hard, guys. Kids, you know how she could slap, right? She slapped the fire out of me. I mean, I, thank God my teeth were still in my mouth at the time. And so I just looked at her, and I, I didn't raise my hands or anything. I just looked at her and just gritted my teeth. And I got in that little beat-up car, peeled out in her dad's driveway, okay? I was, I was mad. Well, I ask for it, and uh, I go home, where I'm angry, I go home, we're not married, dating, I go home and just, you know, go to sleep, that's Saturday night, Sunday morning, of course, we attend church together, and I'm going to her, her I'm going to our church, and uh, before services, we always had time of prayer at the altar, in this little church we attended, and I'll never forget coming in and I wore a suit and tie mostly most Sunday mornings and I come in and it's before I'm pastoring and I we go up and we kneel and she's kneeling at the altar and so I go right beside her and I kneel right beside her. now remember the last I didn't have a phone didn't have cell phones back there all I'm, I'm Native American the only thing I do is send smoke signals right uh, and so I, I haven't talked to her or anything and I kneel down and I look over at her. She looks over at me and we just start laughing. Okay, we thought it was a funny thing. But that's not always the occasion, is it? Some people hold on to those grudges for weeks, months, perhaps even years. So let not the sun. And so if we fail to deal with our anger, it will tend to boil over in an unhealthy emotion. And then what happens? This is exactly what the scripture says. It, leads, it, it will lead to an open door for the enemy to come in. That's why he says deal with it now. Look at the next, next verse. Look at it. Ephesians 4 and 27. It says, 
neither give place to who? To the devil. So given to the place of the devil is giving the devil a foothold in your life, all right? Well, so what, what is the word for foothold? The Greek word for foothold is topos, T-O-P-O-S, and it means an opportunity or even a location. Don't give the devil an opportunity. And so, your word, in other words, this is what it means. Your territory becomes occupied territory, and when that happens, the enemy is trespassing against your life. You're opening the door of the enemy when you do not, uh, when you do not deal with this, this unhealthy emotion of anger. And so Proverbs 14 and 17 says, He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices at hand. Proverbs 29 and verse 11 says, A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth until afterwards. Proverbs 17 and 14 says, The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water, therefore leave off contention before it's meddled with. And then James 1, 19 and verse 20, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. So we need to do those three things. Here they are. They're going to be on your screen. Number one, listen. Two, take some time to process the information before speaking. And then number three, refrain from jumping into anger. Those are three great things to advise. So our life point again was get angry about the things that anger God. I like what John Wesley had wrote. And I, I think this is really interesting. He said, I have never known more than 15 minutes of anxiety or fear. When I feel fearful, emotions overtaking me, I just close my eyes and I thank God that he is still on the throne, reigning over everything, and I take comfort in his control over the affairs of my life. We just, we just dismissed, I think, one of the most beautiful women's uh, conferences that we've had in a while. It was powerful. I know we've had Sister Sandy come. We've had Sister Ka Pastor Karen come. We've had some great women's conferences. But this last conference to me was probably one of the most deep, amazing uh, experiences that we've had in this, in this conference, in our latest conferences. And um, I, really, I really thought about this, this topic that God gave my beautiful wife, It Is Well With My Soul how that resonates with, uh, with me and how I continue to think about when I'm facing uh, Brother Dale, when I'm facing difficult situations, dealing with the dizziness constantly. When I'm, I have to, that, that song or even that, the phrase, it is well with my soul, has to come to my mind. I have to believe that it's got to be well with my soul because if it's not well with my soul, it's not well anywhere else. And I love what John Wesley wrote there. And so one thing is for sure. When we talk about fear, as we move from anger to fear, the more fear we allow to come into our lives, the more it is that we struggle to grow spiritually. I uh, had a fear of man as a, young, as a young man. Some of you know my story. And uh, was abused, you know, uh, physically, verbally. Uh, and so I developed a fear of man. And I, I remember... Uh, having a consultation with, with David Craig, with Pastor Craig about it and speaking to him about some of the issues that I had and, and him helping me and guiding me and helping me with uh, some, of these, some of these things because, you know, uh, if, I didn't, if I didn't come to him and be truthful to him about this that I was dealing with, then I would have never been able to pastor a church. And he, he was, you know, was, he, he was really shocked that that existed in my life. But I explained to him why it did. And uh, thank God that he brought me deliverance. And so one evening, and I told Pastor Carl about this. One evening, I was over here uh, late at night. I just felt compelled. I was living in the youth parsonage, and I felt compelled to come and pray. And I came to this area, and I'm a youth pastor at the time. And I just began praying, and it is at like 1130 at night and uh, we had some youth actually that were over and some family uh pastor crystal's sister was over and so you know it wasn't that i was leaving her by herself and i just came over here and i just began to pray i'll never forget this and as i was praying god began to dip, he spoke to me right there in that in that altar area and he spoke to me and he said he said son i'm delivering you from the spirit of fear 
And I'm, I'm like, oh, and he said, just begin to praise me. And so I just began to praise God. Now, I am not a super spiritual person. I do move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but I'm not a super spiritual, hyper spiritual person and gets all into all of this new dimensions of God because I, I know they exist, but I'm not one that goes and promotes that or promotes myself. But as I began to praise God, I looked through that glass. I could see because of the light. And there was an object, a being from another, from, from out of this world, and it was a demon. And I could see it standing on the other outside of the church. Of course, it can't come in here. And I seen its face, I seen the figure of it, and God told me that is the spirit of fear. And God began to deal with me about that, how he was delivering me from this. And I just went, wow, it's amazing. And this is not the first time that somebody has seen an entity on our church campus. Am I right, Pastor Carl? Uh, and it's even on videotape as well, too. So anyway, uh, so I, I remember that, and so I just began to praise God. And then the more I praised God, it wasn't the first time I ever had that kind of in, encounter, but when the more I praised God, uh, the more boldness that I got, the more freedom I felt. And then all of a sudden, God says, okay, you're done. It's time to go. And so I went out. And I turned the alarm on, and I set the, uh, locked the door, turned everything off. And I was walking. Now, get this. This may give you chills. I was walking from that door across this parking lot to the front door steps over there, to our parsonage. Aaron Bloodworth lived in this old, used to be a house across the street. Remember that, Sister Charlotte? Well, I think her name was Tanya, Tanya, someone that lived over there. And I'll never forget this. I was walking and all of a sudden police cars with their lights on at midnight were coming over here to this, to where Aaron lived. And I'm like, what is going on? And Aaron walks over to me and he says, hey, Jay, what are you doing? I said, oh, well, I was just having some time of prayer. He says, well, did you see the guy? I said, no. What are you talking about? He said, there was somebody over here that was uh, doing something and the police they called the police on him. Isn't that amazing? So God gave me grace and mercy. Fear is toxic. It is. Fear is toxic. It poisons us, us each day if we don't deal with it, if we don't, if we don't nullify its power. As a generic rule, everyone in this room, mostly adults, we, have four we deal with four types of fear, and here they are. We deal with the fear of loss. Fear of loss includes the fear of losing family members like our children. We deal, the fear of loss also includes financial loss of, on some level. We deal, deal with the fear of failure. The fear of failure can paralyze us from accomplishing our goals. Three, the fear of rejection. The fear of rejection can turn us into people pleasers. It's a very dangerous thing. There's the fear of the unknown. And the fear of the unknown can cause you to want to always live in the dark, right? To try to escape life. But this is what the Apostle Paul writes to young Timothy, his, his uh, successor. And he says, for, in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power and of love and a sound mind. So if you think about this, about fear, this component of fear, it actually relies on faith. Did you know that? Fear actually relies on faith. Faith, or fear in, in, is faith in the wrong things. I love what Sister Sandy said to us. She was counseling us about some uh, medical things that we had been going through about five or six years ago. And she was saying, uh, all, all fear is is devil faith. I mean, that's the best way to put it. And it's kind, of, it's kind of funny the way she was saying it, but she's right. That's what it is. Fear is faith in the wrong things. Fear is placing your faith in the what is rather than the God is. Amen? And so when you analyze the element of fear, you can discover two things about fear. Number one, fear reveals what you value the most. It really does. It pulls the curtain back and it shows everyone, including yourself, what you value the most. And number two, fear reveals where, you're, where you trust God the least. 
Because we all trust God in some measure, right? But if you're standing on the top of the Eiffel Tower, <laughs> right, you should need wisdom more than <laughs> in faith, right? But so it shows us fear reveals where we trust God the least. And if you're struggling with fear and you're unable to trust God, then I'm persuaded that you must, you must identify what you're afraid of. Deal with it. Just like when I was in that closet with Pastor Craig and I said to him, I have a fear of man. I'm dealing with this and I want, I want some help. I need some guidance. I need some counseling. And he, so he helped me. He, he, he did his best. He prayed for me anyway. <laughs> he, he helped me in some things, right? But it's so good. So you, you can't know how to overcome fear if you pretend that it doesn't exist, right? You can't overcome if you're just pretending so this is my life point, and I think this is going to help you tonight. Identify the things that trip you up. Identify the things that trip you up. How many are afraid of snakes? Right? <laughs> yeah. Spiders. <laughs> Identify those things that trip you up. Now, we are not one of those... <laughs> We're not one of those Pentecostal snake handling churches. That churches down the road like to take the snakes and dance around with them, but not here at Gospel Lighthouse Church, right? But this is what James 1 and 5 says. If any of you lack wisdom, what's he say? Let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Wisdom, the application of knowledge. And so we should appeal to God to show us whatever we can do within our own power to minimize the risk of those fears to become a reality. There's grace in the place. Truly, there is grace in the place. And if we lack wisdom, what do we do? We ask God for it. If we, if we lack courage, what do we do? We ask God for it. You're right. And so he helps us. Now look at Psalms division 56 and verse 1. We're about to close. It says, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I, will, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Wow. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Maybe you read that and you say, well, I haven't arrived there yet. Well, grace and mercy will help you. It'll help you with every area of your life, right? I was in Honduras, and I'll never forget this. There are two times in my life that I've walked down a dark road, and when I mean dark, it's pitch black. I could not even see the hand in front of my face. It was so black, so dark. And down the road was just a little bit of light. We had broke down, our trailer had broke down uh, on this dirt road in Honduras. I'll never forget this. And so we're trying, we got flashlights, but we're trying to figure out this thing. So I happened to have a couple of headlamps, just came prepared, and I give it to my missionary, and they're working on the trailer, and they said, we need you to walk down this road and uh, see without any light, see if you can come to a house and see if you can get any help all right of course i'm not fluent in spanish and so uh i'm by myself and he wants me to walk down this dirt road in honduras with no flashlight and it's pitch black you're talking about having god with you okay so i'm walking and god is with me and i'm taking my steps and i'm i'm not walking real fast <laughs> And I'm walking, and all of a sudden, I get closer to what I know I could see is kind of a house. And electricity is just not there in some places in Honduras. And I get close to the house, and all of a sudden, I hear a growl. Oh, just a like that. Deep, low growl. And I think, oh, my Lord. I freeze. I literally freeze. And it is a massive German Shepherd. I am not protected. I'm not going to run because if I take off running, I don't even know where I'm going. 
And here I am, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, God, you sent me to Honduras for a reason, and not to be getting eaten by a German shepherd. Okay? And so, God's with me. And the moment I just freeze, a light comes on. This, oh, by the way, this is like way late at night. A light, porch light comes on, and I can hear an owner say some words in Spanish. And, and the dog comes back to the owner, and then we, you know, works out. But I froze right there. So I had a choice. It could either, I could fight or flight. I could, I could just lay down and give up and die, right? Or I could say, God, you're with me. It's just, it, it's amazing that we put ourselves in those situations. One more story, and I'm going to share it with you. You've heard me say this one before. I'm deer hunting down in Ash, uh, down Arkansas. And I decide I'm going to move my 20, it's about a 25 foot stand, a metal stand. I decide I'm going to move it by myself. And uh, you heard the story. I climb up the stand and I start unbuckling it. And then I think, wait a minute, this is not a good idea. And as I'm unbuckling it, the stand moves away from that big, tall pine tree. Back down in southeastern Arkansas, there's humongous, these humongous pine trees. Uh, and so the stand starts going backwards, and I'm on it, and I'm in my, all my hunting stuff, and I'm thinking, I'm holding on the ladder, and I'm thinking, God, I, look, I promise you, I look up to heaven, and I say, God, if you will get this, if you'll get me out of this right now, I will never do anything so ignorant again like that. And still today, I have not. But I'll never forget that. And I was holding on. I thought, I thought about just jumping down and just, just jumping and, you know, dropping and rolling. And all of a sudden, a breeze came out of nowhere and blew me back to the tree. And I decided right then as I buckled this, buckled that stand together, I decided right then and there, that stand is a good place to, <laughs> to hunt from, right? So... Uh, <laughs> We must get to the place where we can declare the word of God in our life. We have to. We must rely, rely, uh, rely on God. So let, I want you to say this with me. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Father God, I believe your word. I'm choosing to trust you. Because of you and your words, I'm choosing to not be afraid. Amen. You believe that? Give the Lord a good hand clap. All right. So, as we close tonight, our life points were get, get angry about the things that anger God and identify the things that trip us up. So, here's Jeremiah 29 and 11. Here's our opening scripture. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an, an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken to you, and you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. This is the point. I think to really make true application with this message is searching God with all of our heart. God has a hope and a future for you. His thoughts are good thoughts toward you. He has great plans for you. What he desires is that we search him, not search for him, but search him with all of our heart. That there's no reservations, that I'm completely dedicated to God committed to him searching him I'm giving all of my fear my anxiety uh, the anger issues perhaps that I'm dealing with I'm giving them all to God Psalms 34 and 4 says I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all from some from all of my fears and then 1 Corinthians 9 and 25 says and every man that strives for the mastery is what's that word Temperate. What does that mean? Self-control. Temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. That's what we were talking about last Sunday morning when we are talking about blinded success. That is a fruit of the Spirit. Temperance is a fruit of the Spirit, perhaps, that we don't speak on enough. Two things that I think we're lacking as uh, leadership, as believers, is temperance, but discernment is another thing. And so we need to be temperate in all things. So what if we determine tonight as we stand in this room 
Before I walk out of that door where that demon was standing, <laughs> by the way, he's not there anymore, <laughs> okay? He's not there, so when you walk out of that door, don't even think about him being there. Don't say, well, I'm going to go out this door now from now on because that demon's... No, he's long gone. He's long gone. <laughs> what if we determine, you say, you know what? I'm going to be temperate in all things. Temperate in all things. You know how that works? You open that refrigerator and you got bottles of water, you got orange juice, and then you got Dr. Pepper and Coke and strawberry and whatever else. And temperate in all things. So what do you choose for? I'm going to get the water, right? I've been having to do that here lately. That's why I bring that up. Temperate in all things. You can be on the ladder putting up Christmas lights. And you're hammering. This happened to me when I was in the Queen. Winston was with me. And I'm putting up Christmas lights. I'm hammering, I'm hammering. And then all of a sudden, boom, and I hit my thumb. And Winston is right there. Young man following in the ministry. He looks at me. His mouth gets so, I mean, he's like, like that. You know how Winston is. And then all of a sudden, I put the hammer up toward the heavens in my fist and I say praise the Lord <laughs> praise the Lord praise the Lord. temperance in all things right wow this is so good God is so good to us let's bow our heads on our heart father we love you thank you so much for this word thank you for the truth of this word there is the potential for these toxins to enter into our lives toxins of anger toxins of fear. We know, they're, we know that they're present. We know that they can, to, they can in, interrupt us any time. Sometimes it can't be avoided, but we have to learn to keep this flesh under submission, to walk in the Spirit so we won't fulfill these lusts. Lust to be fearful, to be angry, whatever it may be. There's so many dynamics at state here, but God, we want to, we want to please you. And that's what you're asking us to do, Father. So forgive us where we fail so many times. Forgive us. While your head is bowed and your eyes closed, I'm going to say something by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Someone tonight, you've been wounded, and God wants to bring you healing and strength. And that's, that, that, that wound has somehow uh, caused you to become fearful in relationships. And that deep wound has is, is hurt you. But I want you to know tonight, God has his grace and his mercy and his love is so amazing that he's able to, to take that wound, that hurt. If you'll just surrender it to God and not allow it to become a, a stumbling block in your life, but allow it to become a stepping stone, you're going to see, you're going to see greater things in your life. You're going to see a a brighter future than you've ever seen by allowing God to allowing God to to take full control that's when he says search searching God seeking God I'm allowing I'm allowing him every part of my life so whoever that is tonight I just want you to know that be encouraged because if you reach out to God God reaches out to you and he helps you and he strengthens you and it, it, is, it is a difficult thing to move forward in this. I understand. I've been wounded before, and we all have. But I want you to know tonight that when you truly give this to God, He gives you so much peace and freedom and strength like you've never seen. So, Father, we thank you tonight. We give you glory and honor and continue to bless us and keep, our, keep our, my beautiful wife and Caleb, keep them safe as they travel. And the people that are on vacation as well, continue to keep them safe. And Lord, that you'll just bring healing to Brother Vernon. And that God, you'll just continue to move and, and smile upon your people, Lord. And bring us back Sunday morning excited about having time with our Heavenly Father, you, God. We give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Shake hands. Get.